Hi, I'm Claire and this is my favourite science fiction and media other than books. We are going to delve into films and TV and games for this week's Booktube SFF Babbles. Every year the lovely humans over at the Booktube SFF Awards put out a series of discussion topics that everyone can participate in, so I'll leave a link to their website in the description box below if you'd like to check that out. As I mentioned, the topic for this week is science fiction and fantasy in media other than books. So today's video is going to be all about sci-fi, but worry not, I will be covering fantasy in my next video. As a side note, I have not included any adaptations of books because that would have made the list far too long. Instead, I'm going to do a separate video all about my favourite adaptations and that should come up on the channel in the next month or two. Now let's start with an absolute classic, Futurama. This is of course the animated comedy series created by Matt Groening of The Simpsons fame. We follow Fry, a pizza delivery boy from New York City who accidentally gets himself cryogenically frozen only to wake up in the year 3000 where he becomes a space delivery boy. Cue a lot of fish out of water comedy, some ridiculous space adventures, the birth of many many memes and also that one episode about Fry's dog back in the present day that left me sobbing like a baby. I love all the characters and the writing is super sharp. It takes on a lot of classic sci-fi tropes and turn them on their heads in delightful ways. Next up we've got a board game. There are a lot of really cool sci-fi themed board games but one of my favorites is Pandemic, designed by Matt Leacock. If you're into board games at all you probably know this one. It's a bit of a modern classic and rightly so in my opinion. This is a cooperative game in which the players will have to work together to try and stop a global pandemic from destroying the world and very often the players fail and everyone dies horribly of the plague. I love this game because it is seriously tense. There are so many cool mechanisms within the game to raise the stakes and up the ante. As soon as you start to feel like you may be getting somewhere with curing the virus, there's another outbreak and it's actually pretty tricky to win, which makes it really sweet when you do. I would also highly recommend the Into the Brink expansion pack, which doesn't so much expand the game as it doubles up the amount of stuff you can do. It also comes with these super cute petri dishes that you can use to store your game tokens. Just adorable. That is one expansion pack where you really get your money's worth. Obviously now we can't talk sci-fi movies without mentioning the MCU, the franchise that owns my heart. More specifically, Captain America, who is probably my favorite character in the entire franchise. Captain America First Avenger gives us such a clear picture of who Steve Rogers is and what he stands for and then Captain America the Winter Soldier has such a terrific plotline. It uses so many tropes that I love. We've got a man out of time, the giant corporation that turns out to be the bad guy. I love the character dynamics in that film. Obviously you've got Steve and who the hell is Bucky, but also there's the introduction of Sam Wilson and Steve and Nat's friendship. It's just my favorite. I was a little less enthusiastic about the MCU after Age of Ultron and Civil War, but the more recent films have been great in my opinion. Thor Ragnarok, Spider-Man Homecoming, Black Panther, all of them had great villains and were just so entertaining. <laughs> I'm now incredibly hyped for Infinity War, especially since it looks like it's gonna have a lot of cap, judging from the trailer. And also that beard. Next up is Tharsis, a turn-based strategy game developed and published by Choice Provisions in which you're in charge of a team of astronauts going to Mars to investigate the disappearance of the previous Mars mission. Along the way, things start going wrong, rooms start breaking down all over the ship and you have to fix them using dice rolls. One of the reasons that I really enjoyed this game is that I find it plays very much like a board game, or at least it really appeals to the board game enthusiast side of my brain. <laughs> it's not just that there is a bunch of dice throwing, it's that you have to be very strategic and careful about how you allocate your dice. You have to take probabilities and odds into account as you play to minimize the risks. And if you fail one dice throw too many, there's always cannibalism. 
Next up we have Rick and Morty, a dark comedy animated series created by Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon. The show focuses on asshole genius scientist Rick Sanchez and his grandson and long-suffering sidekick Morty, who is forever being dragged out of school to tag along with Rick's ridiculously dangerous dimension hopping adventures. When I started watching the show I honestly did not expect that I would end up liking it as much as I do now. For the first couple of episodes especially, I wasn't entirely convinced, because Rick definitely is not a nice person. When I say he's an asshole genius, I don't mean he's oblivious like Sherlock Holmes, or he doesn't understand human people like the doctor sometimes. I mean, Rick is just downright unpleasant sometimes, just like mean, not a nice person. But I was hooked by the show's writing, which is just incredibly smart, but also it understands and it acknowledges just what kind of person Rick is. And this show is also incredibly densely packed. There is so much attention to details, you've got tiny moments that happen on the sideline of the main plot, just real blink and you miss it kind of jokes. And of course this is another show where the narrative is always using these classic sci-fi tropes and subverting them in really interesting ways. It's full of twists and turns and it never quite goes the way you expect it to. Just talking about the show now makes me want to go do a full rewatch. Next up is the card game Race for the Galaxy, designed by Thomas Lehman. In this one, players build galactic civilizations by playing cards in front of them. These can be either planets that are part of your space government, or they can be various scientific or technical developments, or they can be social modifiers, things like that. And of course all of these cards, they stack up and they combine to give you more or less victory points. The one thing I really enjoy about this game is that at the start of each round, each player secretly decides what they want to do on their turn, but then once they've played that action it gives other players the opportunity to also do that same thing during their turn. So if I want to settle a planet I have to choose between playing that card immediately, which might help my opponent, or waiting until they play that card, which might mean waiting a long time. Now I'm not sure that I've explained the mechanic quite right, <laughs> But in any case, there are a lot of other cool things to this game that I really like. And it's also notable as a rare board game that works really well for two players. Now, FTL Faster Than Light is a real-time strategy game that was developed and published by Subset Games, and it is possibly my favorite video game ever, even though I'm not all that good at it because it's a roguelike and it's pretty difficult. Anyway, in FTL you control a spaceship that's holding information vital to the survival of the Galactic Federation. You've got to fly the ship all the way to the Galactic Federation base, which is like eight whole space sectors of doom away, and as you make your way there you have to evade this massive rebel fleet that is pursuing you, and you also have to contend with all these other dangers of space, like nebulas that fry your communication systems, or slavers that want to steal away your crew, or sunbursts that start fires all over your ship, or those four mentis aliens that just boarded your ship and are trying to murder your crew or the fact that you needed energy to power the medbay to heal your crew after you finally defeated the mantises, and you may or may not have turned off the oxygen production facility to do that and then you forgot to turn it back on again and now everyone is dying. Also the score for that game is absolutely gorgeous and I could listen to that for ages. Now I want to quickly mention the TV show Firefly as well as the movie Serenity, both created by Joss Whedon. If you're a sci-fi fan, you've either seen this already, or you're sick to death of your friends telling you to watch the show because it's so great. But I had to bring it up because I love it so. This is of course a space western about the crew of the good ship Serenity, led by grumpy petty criminal Captain Malcolm Reynolds played by Nathan Fillion. Now some aspects of the world building don't necessarily stand up to a whole lot of scrutiny, especially the idea that the whole verse is heavily influenced by Chinese culture even though there aren't any Asian people in it and they all speak English except for like three curse words. But I am ridiculously attached to all the characters in this show and I love the story that it started to tell, I still wish we had more of it. Next up is another one of my all-time favorite board games, Galaxy Trucker, which was designed by Vlada Khvatel. In this game, everyone plays as space truckers who have got to not only deliver cargo throughout the galaxy, but also have to put together their own ships from bits of space junk. So you start every game with a building phase in which all the players have to assemble their ship against the clock, while 
picking from one common pile of tiles. So you have to build quickly so that you can grab some of the good bits before your opponents get to them, but you can't build too quickly, otherwise your ship will be missing some essential components and you'll be really vulnerable in the next phase of gameplay. Because once we're into the actual space trucking phase, all the ships have to take on pirates and slavers and fly through meteor swarms and all that good space stuff. And if you've built yourself a shoddy spaceship, you're gonna lose bits of it on the way. And you wanna make sure at least some of your ship makes it back home with the cargo, otherwise you can't get paid for delivering it. Next we have Daybreakers, a sci-fi horror movie written and directed by Michael and Peter Spierig. The film is set in a futuristic world overrun by vampires where there are very few humans left and there is a massive blood shortage. Vampires are going berserk from blood deprivation, there's a corporation that's capturing and farming any humans that they can find for their blood. In the middle of all of this, Ethan Hawke plays a vampire who's sympathetic to the plight of humans, and also he's working to develop a synthetic blood substitute, until one day he meets a human who claims that he used to be a vampire and that there is in fact a cure for vampirism. I'm not usually super fond of narratives about vampires and also I don't watch a lot of horror though I don't know how much like horror this film really is because it's not that scary but I think it's a really really good ride. I guess the fact that the vampirism narrative is treated in a science fictional way rather than a fantastical way appeals to me. It makes it a lot more like zombies and I bloody love zombies so probably that is why. Next up, we've got Black Mirror, a sharply satirical TV show created by Charlie Booker, in which each standalone episode explores some future semi-dystopian concept, like what if people could rank one another on a social media app where every single thing that you do in your life can win you or lose you points. Yay! <laughs> Now I've not seen all of Black Mirror, partly because the episodes that I saw in series one were super bleak and as much as I found them fascinating and I still want to catch up and watch the whole series, this is not really a show that I could binge personally. The episodes that I did see I really appreciated, there's some really incisive writing and there are some really compelling thought-provoking questions that are raised, even though the experience of watching the show was sometimes more uncomfortable than enjoyable. Lastly, I wanted to shout out XCOM Enemy Unknown, a turn-based tactical game developed by Firaxis Games, in which aliens are invading the Earth and you play as the commander of the XCOM initiative that is trying to defend humanity. I enjoy the gameplay a lot. I love the balance between resource management when you're at the base and you have to decide what research to prioritize and you have to try and keep the global panic levels under control, but then you've also got this combat side when you have to strategically strategically shoot some aliens and you've got to use some precision sniping and you can capture some aliens for research or if you prefer to be a lot less subtle than that you can just use a massive rocket. I was trying not to go on for too long about XCOM because I already gushed about my current playthrough in my latest favorites video but I don't think I really succeeded. Brevity's never really been my strong point, y'all. So that's it. These were some of my favorite science fiction films, TV shows, and games. There is so much more that I haven't had time to watch or to play yet, so if you have any recommendations for stuff that I should try out, or if you just want to shout out your own sci-fi favorites, then please let me know in the comments below, and keep your eyes peeled for my fantasy favorites later this week. If you'd like to see more from me, you can check out a previous video right about here. And if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button that's on my face right here for new videos from me every week. I've been Claire, thanks so much for watching, and see you soon.